This program contains strong language and strong sexual content. It is meant for mature audiences only. Listener discretion is advised. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Happy Hour Podcast. Of course, this is Ray. I'm sitting here with Mike and Matt. How are you guys doing tonight? What do we got going on? Doing great. Can't complain. Uh, tonight, our special guest we will be interviewing is adult film star Sophia West. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, But before all that, we're going to jump right in and we're going to do the beer of the week, which is called Funk. It's a blueberry citrus wheat. It's from Duclaw Brewing Company, made here in Baltimore, Maryland. Oh man, that, and you know what? It's actually kind of funny because isn't your nickname Funk? Oh but, yeah, yeah. Our yeah. friend Mike Years. gave you the nickname Monk, <laughs> Funk. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to know why. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think it's uh pretty good. If you guys uh, see Funk around, make sure uh, you pick it up and uh, send yourself into a little bit of a funk. We'll be right back with the lovely Sophia West. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, the Shining Diamond, Rico Diamante, and I am a graduate of the EWA Pain Factory. Have y'all ever dreamed of stepping out of the crowd and getting into the ring? I mean, that's exactly what I did, and all I'm doing is kicking ass and taking names since. The EWA Pain Factory is now accepting new students so you can experience the same success as the Shining Diamond, Rico Diamante. We're located at 1113 North Point Boulevard in Dundalk, Maryland, so make sure you find us on social media, on Twitter, and Facebook. Make your dreams come true today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Happy Hour Podcast. This is Ray. Of course, I'm here with Mike and Matt. We're here with the very lovely Sophia West. How are you doing tonight? Fabulous, and you all? Doing great. We're great. We're great. I'm better now. <laughs> now, as we all know, you're in the adult industry. How long have you been in the adult industry? Uh, my first studio production was in October of last year, um, but I've been doing my OnlyFans for over a year now. And just been having a great time. Awesome. Now, I noticed you brought up your OnlyFans. And, I, and I've been noticing on all the social media sites, Facebook, Twitter, you know, all that, and Instagram, that everybody promotes their OnlyFans. And I don't get It's everywhere. Like, any anybody's anybody who, you know, they have OnlyFans. What, can you give us a little bit of an in-depth what OnlyFans kind of is for just people who don't know what it is? elaborate for us what it's all about, <laughs> how it started, and how you can get involved with it. Well, OnlyFans is a membership-based platform where you could become a member of any of the ladies or gentlemen that are out there on the Have an OnlyFans page, and we post videos of ourselves, clips, we'll make live broadcasts, we can communicate one-on-one -on -one directly with you and interact. Um, and it, it's really the real revenue generator for us. Um, it's been fantastic, and it gives such a personal feel to the fans that you are really our only fans. <laughs> well, that's awesome. That that's was awesome. well said. Yeah, very well said. Now, you mentioned um, transitioning from the OnlyFans to a studio setting just as recently as October. Was that something you had planned from, from the get-go or something, just a natural evolution that took place? No, actually, I've been wanting to get into the porn industry for a very, very long time. And I've contacted many producers and um, distributors and, and agents, and it just wasn't panning out until I contacted Miss X. I actually reached out to her, and I told her how much I loved her work. And I've never shot porn, and that I've always wanted to, and I would love for her to be my first. And she was willing to take a chance on me. And I am so eternally <laughs> grateful for her. And it is still, out of all my productions, my favorite. Awesome. So Very good. So, so, so how's that experience been so yeah. far? So since you've got into it, you know, you said it's been a long time coming, more or less. 
Uh, is it yeah. what you thought it would be? Is, is there anything that came about that you didn't see coming? It's just basically your experiences so far. Coronavirus. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> It affects everyone, people. Yeah, it's crazy because <laughs> Pornhub actually offered a free premium membership. I think it was in April just for, for the coronavirus and all that. It was insane. Right, and, right. and, you know, I don't have a premium membership, but you better bet your ass I signed up for the premium membership because it's Guilty. like, oh, well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, the porn industry doesn't even know what they're going to do, how yeah. they're going to be testing or anything. It, it's just like... It's everybody's dead in the water. It, it's kind of turned the whole world upside down, that's for sure. Well, it's crazy because look at it this way. I'm sure you guys probably have to go through a lot of testing and, you know, all that stuff as it is. And now you have to add in uh, the COVID-19 stuff. You know, baseball hasn't even came to an agreement on what they're going to do yet, much less, you know, the kind of physical contact that you guys have with what you're doing. Yeah. Oh, because we get really up close and ooey gooey personal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now with that, you talked about your first scene. How was your first scene? How were how were your nerves during that first scene going into it? Was it kind of natural? You know, did you kind of fit in well, or were you a little nervous? How how did that? Or was it kind of just like doing what you would normally do, but uh, now there's just a camera present? Well, uh, yeah, I, it was it was like you finally get to live that fantasy moment, and and I lived it in. My co-star, Tyler, was wonderful. He was such an experienced, great, fun guy to have as my co-star that I couldn't have asked for more. And Missa X's script and the production quality and, and their patience with me um, was just overwhelming that it was it was the perfect experience. I mean, Miss X made us two meals a day while we were shooting. Wow. She was so sweet. It was just, it was an incredible experience. Uh, so my nerves that I thought I was worried about, they weren't there because it was such a welcoming, warm environment that was ready to get down and dirty. That, that's good to hear. It's not something you really expect, you know, being a part of this industry, but uh, it seems like that's a... Uh... The way things are going, and that's uh, that's good to hear. That is a relaxing, calm atmosphere. Oh yeah, yeah. I, you know, I've never had any shoot that has been uptight or where you feel on edge or anything like that. All of my shoots have been very relaxed. Everybody's very chill, professional, um, and just wonderful. I, I have not got a negative thing to say about anybody I've worked with. Now, with all that, you said you've only been in the business since about October. Is there any porn-related injuries that you sustained? <laughs> oh, yes! And it was, it was my biggest fantasy. I was so excited when I got offered the, um, the glory hole. I oh. But let me tell you guys, when you are on your knees and with your head pressed against a wall flat for an hour and a half, <laughs> your shoulders, your neck, your knees, everything, it's like agony. I, I felt like I needed to go and do like some serious yoga. <laughs> like I needed to be like power stretched out. It was, that was one where I was like, oh goodness, that was, that was tough. <laughs> Now, you mentioned yoga. Is yoga one of the things that you do to, to keep in shape for when you shoot? You know, we saw in your bio that you like to go to the gym, you like to do squats, all that mm -hmm. stuff. What what all do yeah. you do to keep now, yourself in shape for shooting? Is my, I, I've learned that I, I, when I go to the gym, I like to be a big old sweaty mess. Like, mm -hmm. you could take my braids, you could wring those suckers out <laughs> kind of thing. And yoga, you don't get that way. But the one thing I've noticed, like, since I've done yoga once or twice a week, and I only do, like, a 30-minute session, um, that my flexibility, my I don't injure myself as much, everything like that, that's, that's where the real benefit has been for me. On, on the training note, uh, has there been any input from producers, directors saying, I don't know, maybe try this out to uh, extend your endurance, flexibility, like you mentioned? Is, are, are, there, are those kind of things mentioned? I mean, uh, that's not his question. No, 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 no. Actually, um, Miss X told me my body was a work of art. <laughs> very good, very good. Well, I mean, we're, we're, we're not going to argue with that. Well, I, so. was, I wasn't really trying to apply that. I was yeah, kind of yeah. getting more at, is, is there... A time where they say, say a scene's lasting X amount of time, do you realize 
man, I'm kind of out of breath here. I need to. I should probably do a few more squats or what have you. Some cardio. No, no, that's not me. That I have nothing but respect for male talent. My goodness, what these guys have to do and maintain and not go too soon. Mm. Wow. <laughs> it's incredible. I mean, it's it's amazing what I wouldn't do. last two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, not that we haven't thought about it. It's like, yeah, this would not be a good career choice for us. Watching, but this is hours of shooting. So think about that for the male yeah, talent. Right, exactly. That's, that's, that's kind of what I was thinking about. It, it goes on both sides. Yeah. Now, with that, it, we, we extensively research you bio-wise and, of course, video-wise. So is, is there anything you haven't done yet in the business that you really want to do? Well, I still have not done a studio girl-on-girl. Girl. Really? I love that. And I have not done a transgender. I've always wanted to do that as well. And okay. it's just the sky's the limit. If if somebody tells me that I need to tie somebody up on camera and make them my bitch, give me my riding crop. I'm game on. I've got the bitch to go with it. <laughs> nice. now we, I, I did just, notice that you did some taboo stuff as well. I noticed that that's a big genre right now is the whole taboo mom, son, or stepmom, son, or, you know, dad, oh, stepdad, daughter, all that. So there's we did a lot see of that, fucked yeah. up people. Yeah. <laughs> We all have fucked up people inside of us. <laughs> oh, that, that's a hundred percent true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's the kind of. Th there's always an audience for no matter what the topic or subject is. There, there, no matter how obscure you may think it'll be, somebody's into it. Totally, totally, one hundred percent. And also, and, oh, what was that? I'm sorry. No, I was just gonna say it, it, that's exhilarating. It's just amazing. It just shows you that that sex, it, it's not our sexual organs. It's what's up here. It's our brains. That's our biggest sexual organ. And our imagination takes us to places that our, our vaginas, our penises, our anuses can't take <laughs> us to. Man. You know, they said that you were very smart. And very classy, and I, I can I could probably talk to you for hours. <laughs> oh, aren't you wow. sweet, yeah. Matt? Thank you. <laughs> and we, I noticed online that you did a gangbang scene. How how does right that in. work? My question is with the gangbang. When that happens, is there structure to that, or is it just kind of a, just free, a free for all? all. Right. Yeah. <laughs> just, just go for it's it. It's a free for all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can tell the ones that have been really. Like, it's really funny before the shoot happened, like, we're all hanging out in the in the room, you know, just kind of chit-chatting before while they were prepping and getting everything set up. And the guys that were sitting closest to me and rubbing my back and talking to me, they were the ones that were, like, right on top of me. <laughs> the other one was like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang back. I'm going to be cool. I'm going to wait my turn. I'm going to sit here and stroke my cock. <laughs> Now, with, with that, like you said, the ones that were being a, a little bit more aggressive, do you guys have any, like, for example, I've done professional wrestling for 21 years. And when we were in a match, if a guy put on a hold too hard, like if he was putting on too much tension, we would have a way, like, tap him in a certain position and be like, hey, you're applying too much pressure. Is there anything that you guys have in the porn industry where if they're getting a little too aggressive or something like that, to where you can indicate to them, hey, kind of, you know, slow your To where it doesn't mess the scene up, to where you can get the message across. In the bang bang scene, they actually sat all the guys down and me in a chair, like, away from them, and they're like, okay, Sophia, tell us what are your things that you don't want done or you don't want it done at the same time or anything like that so that the guys all knew what were the things that I was uncomfortable with, which is really nothing. <laughs> I've seen some of your videos. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it was, it, but it was nice. It was just nice to be able to say, you know what? Hey, if two of you stick, try to stick your cock in my mouth at the same time, I don't like that. But... <laughs> That's not a problem for me, but some girls that might be a problem. Um, and it's, it's like nice ass to mouth, you know. <laughs> farm where they can say yeah, they can voice that, and then the guys all know because they're professionals too, and they want to get hired next time. 
So they're going to play by the rules. Yeah. Makes Very sense. Makes <laughs> it does sense. make makes perfect perfect sense. Now, I mean, some of the the my co-stars have been the most perfect gentlemen. Just wonderful. Now, is there anybody in specific that when you did a scene with them, you were like, "Hey, I definitely want to work with them again." Like pretty much like you know, and you don't have to name names or anything like that. But is that a thing also? Do do cliques kind of form where certain groups tend to stay together? Well, I am dying to do another scene with Tyler again. Now that I've done several, I want him to see like me and what I've like kind of grown into and learned. Mm. Uh, so, because he got me as the novice, the first timer, he popped my cherry. <laughs> I want him to see me as like. More of like the cherry that's been saturated in Manhattan for a while. <laughs> <Very> <laughs> um, and then I love, um, I did an OnlyFans video with Karen. Oh my God, I had such a great time with him. I would love to shoot with him again. I would just, yeah, he's fabulous. And I've been, and it, it's awesome that you're meeting a lot of guys that you like working with. Because I have recently seen online that there's been a lot of reports of abuse lately in the porn business and all that. And that just, that, 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 that there shouldn't be room for that anywhere, much less in the porn business and all that. So it's great that you have people that, you know, you can form a posse with that you can click with and that you trust and all that, because you know, it's, it's just bad everywhere around. Oh yeah. I mean, anybody, this is only fun when it's consenting adults and if it's not, mm -mm, there's no place for it. There's no time for it. (laughs) And it's not sexy. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Now, you you said that you wanted to um, do a scene with a transgendered person. Would you do a scene with a midget, a a little person, a dwarf? I actually have had sex with a dwarf. Oh, nice, 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 nice. I I definitely have to find that. Now, it's going to escalate a little bit more. Would you do a dwarf gangbang? personal experience of mine that will only be replayed in my own head <laughs> nice 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 that <laughs> oh yeah it's going to be running through his little mind uh, you know for, forever <laughs> now we noticed in a lot of your videos too is that you also you you eat ass so um, and this this is an odd question it, I'm sure everybody's properly groomed but have you ran into the situation where you're just kind of like, ah, not sure if I'm going to do that this scene because, uh, you know, we've been kind of sweating and it kind of, you know, isn't going too well in that area. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> if, if there was any kind of like actually on any ass eating scene, we like we're jumping in the shower right prior to that. And <laughs> having we're taking the wipes and going around, making sure everything is spick and span. And let me tell you, there is a bottle of Listerine waiting for us. <laughs> mm. um, so it's as clean as it could be. Um, it's it's just uh, it's so fun to go where you're not supposed to go, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Especially for something that is definitely not supposed to be there. <laughs> that's a good answer. That that's, that's very a good, good answer. answer. That's a very good answer. <laughs> now you talked about in your first scene, Missa X, that she fed you guys and all that. On well, most porn scenes, is there normally is there like catering? Like that do they do catering and all that or I've heard that some that a lot of the, the bigger companies do. I have not seen it. Um although when I <laughs> When I shot with Asiani Studios, um, they actually were like, you've got to come to our bowling group. And they invited <laughs> me to go bowling with them afterwards. So, yes, I was bowling with porn stars. <laughs> That's great. Oh, it That's was great. so much fun. Seems like there's a lot of camaraderie. It's more like a social club. Just people you're comfortable with and uh, make money with and live out your fantasies and dreams with. I- actually heard that there are some OnlyFans vids out there that are from the bowling parties in the bathroom. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. Oh, man, so that, that that's hilarious. Search up and 
Yeah, I'm fine though. Well, it's funny because way back when I used to work at a bowling alley and I worked in the back area. I worked on the bowling alley machines and all that. And there's so much noise back there. And you're the only one back there. And I've often thought to myself, I'm like, man, I can. This is the perfect I, spot. Yeah, I could bring anybody <laughs> back here at any given time and do whatever. And they would never know what was going on until, of course, the lane jams up and they're like, oh, yeah, ball return on such and such lane. And I'd be like, well, I'm trying to return my balls now. You know. <laughs> so. <laughs> but yeah i i mean it, it it's kind of funny that you know it, and it's cool that you guys can hang out and you know do all that stuff you know together and all that and have your own posses yes yes well you know so any any people that work together that happens how many people go to happy hour after they get out of the office oh yeah yeah i mean we're sitting here right now having uh drinks as we're talking to you and you know all that stuff <laughs> I had a glass of wine before. And I already had dinner. I'm East Coast time. Dinner time. Had a glass of wine with a lovely piece of fish. It was great. Now you you uh you drank wine. So what what is your go to wine? Do you like red wine? Do you like white wine? What 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 is your go to for wine? Depends on what I'm eating. Um, <laughs> She's really a wino, definitely. definitely. <laughs> one I could have above and beyond anything is champagne. Champagne is my favorite. I love it. I love it. Um, I can't get enough of it. But if I'm going to have fish, like I had a lovely um, Sauvignon Blanc from um, New Zealand, and it was fabulous with my fish. If I'm going to, like, I had a wonderful steak last night. Oh, and I actually had an incredible bottle of wine that was from Italy, and it was just so earthy and just spicy, and it brought out that juice of the steak. Now, wine is just something that is, it just, it doesn't only just feed you and make you feel warm, but it's got such depth and range and it has a character. All it does. It, it can accentuate a lot of things. Like you said, food is, whenever you see a menu in a restaurant, pairs well with, you know, and, and are you the type of needs to try what it pairs well with just to see how it goes well, and I see you drinking beers if you want to talk about some of the best beers ever go Belgium Belgium like, yes Belgian monks they make one batch of beer a year and they support their monastery off of one batch of beer really for the whole year that's I mean, awesome just, I told you she's a genius <laughs> she's, like, she's, she's so smart caramely richness oh my gosh that yeah. and you can do you guys have total wine where you're at total, total wine and spirits wine. yes we do we do we actually have one that's about 25 minutes from where we are yes go and check them out because they carry a four pack of a belgian and now it's gonna it's it's not cheap but it's worth every penny Oh, that's that's Take fine. Beer, yeah. our beer of the week for next week. Yeah, yeah, and we 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 do we do a beer of the night every you know every week when we do that's these podcasts. I've been. Oh. That's what you're buying me. <laughs> that's awesome. Now I don't know if you got it. I sent you uh, over some uh, Twitter messages. We uh, want to play a little segment that we call. I've <laughs> ever played Cards Against Humanity before. Oh, I have. I love that game. All right, so nice. what I did is I sent you over the face card, and um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've gotten them yet or whatever and all that, but I sent you over three cards from each one of us. And um, yeah. if you can just read the face card and then read each card after that and then pick which card you think is the best, and that I will... Actually, if you wouldn't mind, because I didn't have my phone with me, um, if you wouldn't mind reading me the face card, I wrote down the answer, though. Okay. Yeah, I apologize. <laughs> Go ahead and take care of that. Armani suit, $1,000. Dinner for two at that swanky restaurant, $300. The look on her face when you surprise her with blank, priceless. Sneezing, farting, and coming at the same time. <laughs> yeah, when, uh... I told you that son of a bitch yes. will win. <laughs> Well, we drew all the cards and we looked and we're looking at all these. We're like, man, these are some solid draws and all that. Because normally you don't get cards like that. And I was when the last one to pick as well. I'm like, yeah. and how did you leave this one in here? Good ones. Uh, but I, I mean, when I heard the sneezing, farting, and coming at the same time, if I saw some guy do that, I would have been like, 
Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good talent right there. Yeah, that, that is talent. And then look at it, the, the one, fucking a corpse back to life. Like, could you imagine, like, you know, you're, you go back and someone's like, oh, yeah, you know, don't worry about it. We're just going to go back in this room and I'm going to fuck this corpse back to life real quick. Now, I don't know. <laughs> you, you're more well-versed in this than I am. Are, is there such a thing as zombie porn? There, I have seen some, zo- like, walk, the, the yeah. Walking Dead parody and, you yes. know, stuff like that. And the spookiness, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, I it, mean, perfilia, it's in, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, it's crazy. Some of, you can literally, and we're going to do a dedicated episode on porn with just the three of us where we talk about it. And I feel like that with porn, it just, it, it goes more and more and more and more. How much research but, time are you each individually going to put into this? Uh, well, we have enough research just over our years of, you know, just looking at the internet. Like, I feel like that the more you watch, right. the worse it gets. Uh, like, you just watch, and it's like, okay, well, now we're watching this. Now we're watching, yeah. you know, zombies with this. Then we're watching, oh, now somebody's with, <laughs> you know, like Sasquatch or something like that. You keep on going down yeah. the rabbit hole, and it yeah. just escalates yeah. and escalates. <laughs> Alice in Wonderland, here we come. Yeah. <laughs> dark side of facebook or it's oh yeah. yeah i've been watching porn since i was like nine <laughs> so well versed in, in porn yeah. now if if there was something in porn that you could parody if you could pick like let's say one or two things that you could parody in a porn setting what would it be oh my gosh well i have I would want to parody Boogie Nights because that oh, really made God. me think of wanting to I'm be like in love with her. <laughs> when I saw Roller Girl, I was like, oh, yeah. oh my God, yeah. she's hot. She's so in charge. Just like, look at her. Oh, I loved it. I was just so, I, I'm like, that. that's awesome. Well, that's and funny. Because Mark Wahlberg was so young in that. And of course, I mean, my God, when he unzips for the first time. <laughs> Big, bright, shining star. With some guy, like, with the 70s wave going. <laughs> oh, I might have to leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We missed the mark, though. Because with the coronavirus, with all these guys not getting their hair cut, how many oh, people would have Lord. had 70s oh. bro going? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's very yeah, true. Yes. That would be a good time to shoot that now. Speaking of... I even, like, had, like, hair down there. First thing I did was get waxed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, where you're at, is everything pretty much back to normal? Or is it still kind of restricted uh, at, where you're at right now? Um, it's restricted. It's changed. Um, I went to go and go to a record store today. And I had to wait for probably 20 minutes to come in because there were 10 people in there that were rightfully so slowly enjoying perusing the records. I'm just like, (laughs) damn it, this is Atlanta. The sun is out. It's hot. Let me in. I want to peruse the records in air conditioning. (laughs) Are are there still a lot of record stores in the Atlanta area? Because around here, it's becoming a dying thing for sure. I mean, there's not many left. There was one called Record Tape Traders that kind of just went away. You need to go to them, but it's worth the journey. And when you're there, you want to enjoy it. Walk around, look at them. You know, pick out the the golden gins from right. long ago. I mean, the, the internet's great, and you know, and MP3s yeah, are fine. But having physical media was, was something to, to me. It, it's it's always better to have a record, a CD, you know, an actual copy of a game instead of something downloaded. I've always been a big fan of physical media. Yes. Yeah. Well, in like with records, it's the it's the artwork on the cover. God, she's so classy. <laughs> and it's just the. <laughs> The sound of right. it, especially there, there's some actual the substance has there. The gritty texture to the needle going across the vinyl. Yes, yes. And digital, it's it's too clean. It's studio all the way. It is. It's it's too intangible. Like I said, it, it's it's just not it's not as not real enough for me. Yes, it's it's too perfect. Right. Well, you look at it, records are starting to come back. It's crazy how records are starting to come back. My wife just bought a record player, and I haven't seen a record player since I was a kid, and my dad had one, a part of a stereo, a part of a stereo system. So I'm like, all right, now we have a record player, you know, and all of the big artists are now, Bruno Mars, Taylor Swift, you know, all of them, they're all releasing actual vinyl what's, records what's old again. Is new again. Yeah. You actually are supposedly, you get a, a higher quality level of replay off of vinyl. 
it's the best. It is. It's definitely higher fidelity for sure. Yes. Yeah. And Sophia, real quick, we're going to take a little break so we can get a word from our sponsors, and then we'll be back in one second. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. We here at the HH Pod would like for you to go visit Tony, Kaylee, and the rest of their talented artists at Instant History Tattoo and Art Studio in beautiful downtown Havre de Grace. They were recently voted second runner-up in the best in Hartford County. Make sure you check them out and get some quality ink done. Once again, that's Instant History Tattoo and Art Studio. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back on the Happy Hour Podcast. Yet again, we're being joined by the lovely Sophia West. And I can't help but to bring up, you did mention earlier that, you know, the yoga stuff. And, it, you know, we're going to plug one of our future guests right now. We're actually, we're going to have Diamond Dallas Page on our program in a couple of weeks. He's the founder of DDP Yoga. And during our break, we kind of talked with you a little bit. And me, myself, I lost about 70 pounds, you know, just dieting and doing yoga and all that stuff. It's amazing what yoga and, and that's all I did. I did just yoga. And you know, it keeps it kind of for me it keeps you focused. Like, you know, I never sat there and really thought as much about going to the gym or running or, you know, doing anything like that until I started doing yoga. And then yoga is the kind of thing I can go back to it at any point and it just gets me back in that motivation and that focus. Do you feel, you know, that's kind of how it is with yoga? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean you have to get in this position and and find your relaxation in it. And that just that's really cool. Like you could be, oh, this stretch feels oh, like it's so deep, but it feels so good, and it hurts at the same time. And you're just like you've got to be able to relax and breathe, and then go deeper into it. It's great. Yeah, it totally makes you focus on your body in a way unlike anything else. Now, with everything, we we did feel field a couple of questions from our fans. Um, you know, we always we always try to like to do a fans roundtable. We got a couple of questions from some of our fans. This question comes from Jack, and uh, he asked, <laughs> and this is the old school question. I, I I think he's just doing this to be funny. He said, "Have you ever had your ass eaten by a fat guy in an overcoat?" No, the overcoat was on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> it's so witty, I love it. That's great. <laughs> It's great that, you know, because we're, we're seeing you on video. We're seeing you real time. You know, the people at home can't. Yeah. It's funny that you sat there and you actually were like, hmm, let's see. What was the overcoat on or was the overcoat on the floor? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's great with that. And then also somebody from Twitter. This is Bryant24 from Twitter. He asked if you would ever do a video where you do a, a contest and the contest winner being one of your fans, if you would do a scene with one of them. Oh, yeah. Yes, especially if they wrote the scenes themselves oh. and submitted them. And I would do the scene with the best one, so they would even get to live out their own fantasy. How cool would that be? That would be cool. And I that's mean, really, pretty badass. Yeah, if somebody did that, would you want like something that's like you know, kind of downtone, or would you want something that's just completely fucked up? Like, you know, you're sitting there, you're looking at it, and it's like, okay, well, you know, this person might win, but you know what? I don't know. This sounds so fucked up that I just kind of want to do it. Like, you know, it, it, honestly, I think if someone submits the uh, Bookie Nights parody, that'd be the winner right there. Like, that, they'd be like, oh, we listen to Happy Hour Podcast. Yeah, we know. Secret window to my soul now. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> But I, I think above and beyond what's the sexiest is when somebody just fully embraces it. And you could feel it. Like, I mean, we've all seen, like, the the super kinky out there crazy porn that it's just, like, you know that they're just thinking how extreme that they can get. Yeah. And it's, it gets to the point where it's not sexy. You yeah. want it to almost be this thing where the the stars are pushing, the story is pushing each actor to up the other to get more intense. That that's the where it gets where the kinky, crazy stuff is just so hot, where you 
literally want to just plug in your vibrator charger to the wall <laughs> and not unplug it. <laughs> now with that, talking about all that kinky weird stuff, we talked about some of the scenes you've done earlier. Would you ever, and I, I couldn't, I didn't see one online when we were looking up some of your stuff, but would you do or have you done a blow bang scene? I have done one in my personal life, but never one that was videoed. And like okay. I did the whole like Bukaki thing, oh. where it, <laughs> it, it was it was very hot. I loved it. As, <laughs> as I said, I was so excited about doing the Glory Hall because yeah. that was like the the level above that. Like because yeah. I got to see those guys, but yeah. to not see and yep. that was that was so. <laughs> now with that uh, did... <laughs> I, I had to do it I was so excited and then when I discovered the level of pain I was in was like, oh no yeah. now when you do a scene like that and it, you know I'm sure you probably do but do you it, it would be great if they just you know it, it, everybody gets tested and all that obviously but it'd be great if you had actually no humanly idea who the fuck was on the other side of that wall. Like, they have no idea if it's a man or a woman that's doing the blowjob or anything like that, but then yet, the person on the other side of the wall, a woman has no idea, you know, what color they are, who they are, what they look like, anything like that. And I feel at the end of those, they should do scenes like that and reveal, hey, this is who was blowing you, or hey, this is, you know, who you were blowing yeah. or whatever. Have you ever yeah. seen The Masked Singer? <laughs> I think it's something yes. like that, you know? Yeah. The whole have you, you guys should do a parody of The Masked Singer. You probably already have, but <laughs> someone's already thought of it. Damn, my idea's gone. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> Instead of The Masked Singer, The the Blind Cocksucker, or something <laughs> yeah. like that. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> a blind one would probably be really good because one sense is completely gone. Reliant exclusively on the others. Yeah, yeah. and th this makes me sound like a terrible bastard, but I did look up a get a deaf girl porn one time, and it it was hot along with I just I I I felt bad for laughing so uncontrollably because just <laughs> the sounds the girl was making I just I, I couldn't keep it together I, I and I know that's wrong I'm an awful awful terrible very, human very high maturity level here as you can see. <laughs> income at the same time but you yeah. are laughing and coming at the same time <laughs> ah. we actually had a funny quote in pro wrestling and we used it a lot some of my buddies came in and we talked about all of our wrestling stories and one of the things was he didn't know whether he wanted to come or cry and that kind of reminded me of that of you know i thought about it i'm like man she almost said he didn't know whether or not he wanted to come or cry <laughs> <laughs> hmm. yeah so with so with the COVID stuff that went down, when actually was the last time you filmed a physical scene for a studio? We know you did your only you're doing your only fan stuff. It was March sixth or seventh, I forget the actual oh, man. date, but it's right around that time. Man. Yeah, at the very beginning of March. So when yeah. you when you come back from all that, is it going to be the kind of thing where you're going to be gung ho, where you're like, I want to do just a single scene, or are you going to be like, hey, just line them all up, line up like about twelve guys, line up let's the blow bang, let, yeah, yeah, let, let's yeah. let's just do it, let's do the mass singer <laughs> blow bang. It, it it, it's it's an intensity level. It's just like, yeah, I'm into. Oh, that was so much fun. Let's see if the next <laughs> one's going to be funner. Oh, let's do the. Oh, this is a different person. Oh my god, this is going to be great. <laughs> no, more the merrier. Bring it on. Nice, nice. So it, it really, it, and what's kind of cool is it sounds like there's there's a lot of stuff that you've done outside of camera that you still want to do on camera. And yeah. yeah, so there's a lot of opportunity there for you. And you said you're still new. So do you guys have a lot of creative freedom? Like, can you contact one of the studios or one of the producers or directors and go, hey, I want to do this kind of scene. Is there that kind of leeway that you have to where you can do something like that? There, I mean, you, the, the producers are always getting stuff from, from people because yeah, everybody wants to write in, they want to do it. So they get that. Um, but like my agent, um, he, he asked me, he's like, I want you to, to give me the top 10 scenes that you would like to do so that he could be on the lookout for it. 
Um, and that that way he knows that, hey, I'd be really into this. And when somebody's into it, it's going to be a better production yeah. overall. So you're in your so, element, yeah. To piggyback off yeah. that a little bit, uh, through the OnlyFans forum, have they requested anything from you that you thought, huh, that's a good idea that I never considered a thought of before? Um, no, because my imagination's a little bit wilder than theirs is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, but it, it's been so much fun, like, when they do, like, it, like, listening to, the, like, when I ask questions about, oh, you want this custom video, oh, well, I, I mean, there was this one guy that I was, I actually sent him all of these pictures of different outfits, and I'd even, like, do up-close pictures of my shoes and stuff, so that, <laughs> you know, to get him involved, because he was, like, so excited about his storyline, I was like, well, let's, let's do outfits with this, too, and we just, it was fun. It was fun. It was like a, a dual effort. It was great. Now, with that, what's the, the strangest request that you've gotten so far on OnlyFans? <laughs> Is there anything that sticks out that you were like, well, you know, because it seems like you have a, a you know, you'll do pretty much whatever. But yeah. have you ever sat there and thought, well, that's a little odd that they're, you know, asking this? No. No, no, no. Not, not um, necessarily odd, but just something that, that you wouldn't have thought somebody would have came up with. <laughs> that, that's something that you haven't really thought, yeah, I could see how somebody would be into that, or, or that's just something that's, that's different, that's new. That's... Well, see, we've already talked about how broad porn is. It's all been out yeah. there, so it's like nothing's going to surprise me when they come up with something. Oh, you, you, want, to, you want water play in the shower? with? So it's more them teeth? being surprised by things you suggest to them. And, and they're kind of like, oh, well, I didn't consider that. And they're kind of into it. No, there's, I've never had anybody ask me anything that off the wall. Somebody come and ask me, surprise me, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. Anybody listening on OnlyFans, uh, ask away. <laughs> so there you go. You hear now all of your only. Only fans, fans. That that's hard to say. Only fans, fans. <laughs> back to back. Your fans jump on my only fans. Tell me, blow my mind. Yeah. Mm. And, and now you brought up uh, outfits. Is there any specific outfit or costume or anything like that that is one of your favorites? Like, is there like any superhero costume or any costume in general? Has anybody asked you to wear an inflatable T Rex costume or you know, <laughs> like like that? That'd be a different. Like that's that's kind of what we were asking before. Has anybody been like, hey, can you get one of those like inflatable T Rex costumes and just wear that? And you know, and, and it's like it's weird because they wouldn't be able to see you as it is. But is there any costumes that you know you like that you've dealt with or any costumes you want to wear that are your favorites honestly when i feel the sexiest it's it's in boots so any costume that has me wearing skin tight over the knee boots i love and i feel so <laughs> hot in and just I just can't wait for the costume to be ripped off with the boots left on. And look, you, <laughs> yeah, you can see it in her face right I'm now. Getting when, she, yeah, myself, yeah. Yeah. When, when she was describing that, just the look on her face and the look in her eye when she was describing that, you're like, oh man, she's she's really I thinking think I about those my beer boots. A bit too. <laughs> <laughs> and the beer, I my boots. yeah, the beer that we're drinking is called Funk, and pretty much. The boots send her into a funk, and that's pretty much what it is. Like wearing the boots will send her into a complete funk. <laughs> they completely do. They completely do. I don't want to take them off. <laughs> you don't have to. You can keep oh, them on. Like Nancy Sinatra's boots might have been made for walking, but mine were made for fucking. Ah, oh, oh, that's and such that a great. Is getting saved. Yeah, yeah. That that sound file is going to get saved, <laughs> and that way we can just sound file somebody with it one day unexpectedly. <laughs> do it oh no doubt we we will we 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 love to mess with our buddies when we do this because a lot of times we'll bring in our buddies that you know a lot of this the show is us just talking about you know fun stories and all that you know we have all you know just such crazy stories amongst each other is there anything that stands out to you you know that one night you went out partying or what you know what have you that just went off the rails really quick just a crazy moment you know if you either you being on the road you know shooting or just in general out drinking with your even friends. something unrelated to the AVN industry <laughs> the last night of avian awards oh my gosh 
there was like I, I left because I was just I was like oh, okay another award oh this is <laughs> I, I, I'm a little bit over this because like, they had us waiting for hours before we got in there oh man and, and it just it got very kind of repetitive and I was just like I'm out of here <laughs> well all of a sudden I hear Sophia as I'm going down and then there's somebody I've worked with before and then there's somebody that that person's with that knows and then there's somebody else and we all like end up going and having the wildest orgy together just incredible off the wall monkey crazy ooey gooey messy sex so there was, was a monkey crazy. involved <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah. from the chandelier I don't know. <laughs> now with that you mentioned avn and you mentioned the big orgy is that is that a big thing post show with avn awards because you can imagine you're getting all these stars together in one night that normally aren't we're around each tested. other and we are all fully tested so we're all squeaky yeah. clean <laughs> about that too so we're all like we're clean we're horny we've just been stuck in this room in line for hours no we are gonna go oh whatever crazy. will we do to pass the time yeah yeah <laughs> and the this whole we had to keep her clothes on for that whole time that's Jeez. not normal <laughs> Yeah, Sophia's sitting there like, man, I just want to wear these goddamn boots that I have on. Like, I've been wearing these the whole time, wanting to only wear them. Yeah, so you're picking up your award and wiping the cum off your face. (laughs) (laughs) Now, with the porn industry, and I'll, I'll actually, I'll ask you if there's anybody off the top of your head, guy and girl, that you would want to work with in the future. Oh, my God. I would love to work with Jessa Rhodes. And I would, I would absolutely, I would love to work with Tyler Dixon again, but I would also love to work with James Dean as okay. well. Okay. James Dean. Yeah, he's one of my favorite dudes. Yeah. I like that guy. Yeah. I mean, just scrumdiddly <laughs> Yeah, he's pretty Here, hot. Here's the thing. Would you, <laughs> would you do a scene with Ron Jeremy? He's porn, porn legend, legend, you know, all that. And, I mean, the guy's great. He, he seems like he's an awesome, funny guy. He has his own, I think he has his own wine. He has, a, weren't we looking at it, that? It was a, I believe it's a rum. It's a rum. A rum. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally would. Totally would. And, you know, that, it was funny because Ron Jeremy, I always looked at it. It's like, you know, if you're kind of overweight, you know, all that stuff, that dude's like your hero. I mean, he, he's the like, every man yeah. aside from the giant cock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, and, and it's like... <laughs> wonder how good is he it's like what is he gonna do to me yeah how does yeah. it feel it, it might be one of those cases though like can it live up to the hype you know like again he, he's an icon so it's like is is it is the mind and the expectations above what can be delivered oh no I don't <laughs> i'm sorry i might have ruined that for you <laughs> training conditioning no now let's Got just it. let's just hope that I saw a photo of Ron Jeremy not too long ago. He was dressed up like Mario. Let's just hope he just doesn't come into the room and he's like, "It's a me, Mario, and I'm here to have you clean my pipes and all that," or that he doesn't yeah, jump through a random he pipe. Might be laughing and coming at the same time. Ah. <laughs> yeah, he'll walk in and he won't know whether he wants to come or cry. <laughs> oh man. So you're from Atlanta. Is that where you're actually from? You live in Atlanta, or are you just currently I'm in Atlanta? I'm in Atlanta now, but I'm originally from Gainesville, Florida. Oh, okay, okay, oh, cool, cool, cool. Shout out to everybody down in Florida that we know. Yes, go Gators! <laughs> now, with that, is there any celebrities that you would want to do a scene with, guy or girl or both? Ooh. Goodness. <laughs> well, oh my God, what what is her name? The oh, she just she just recently divorced Brad Pitt. I can't believe I'm blanking. Angelina on Jolie. Oh my, I feel like such an idiot. Angelina Jolie. Thank you, Angelina <laughs> Jolie. But Angelina Jolie when she was with Billy Bob Thornton. Oh, wild. yes. I totally want to do her. Yes, that. that that Angelina Jolie. Very hot. That was a very hot Angelina Jolie 
and all that. Very naughty. Yeah. Yes, the, the the kiss of her brother, the girlfriend she had. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To do her at that stage. Yeah, I I I would like to imagine what it would okay, be. Okay, hypothetical. You have an opportunity to do a scene with Angelina Jolie, but it also has to include Billy Bob Thornton. Do you still do it? Oh, totally down there. <laughs> totally down there. I, I would say, I would say, Angelina, let's see who can make him come harder. Make a game right. of it. Challenge. But he's got to wear the Santa outfit from Bad Santa. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes, he awesome. has to wear the Santa outfit from Bad Santa. And she had, for some reason, the Maleficent costume she had on. <laughs> that kind of, I don't know what it was, that whole thing she had. I was like, that's kind of fucking sexy. Like, I don't I don't know what it was, but, you know. They took cheekbones and just made them like. Yeah, yeah. These incredible, just. Sexy cheekbones that were just, yeah. Yeah. And just imagine that, the whole sex scene. It's you, Billy Bob Thornton as Bad Santa, and yes. Angelina Jolie, old school Angelina Jolie, Billy Bob Thornton era Angelina Jolie as Maleficent. Yes. That, you know, right there just says money. Oh, just picturing yeah. that in your uh, mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah. I'm down. I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll get on Are it right you now. Sure. <laughs> Somebody grab the marker right now. <laughs> now, with that, is there any male celebrities besides Billy Bob Thornton that you know, right offhand, that you would like to, you know, do the coitus with? Do the coitus. Um, let me think. Who would be the one that I would most think would just be wild, crazy, and fun beyond words? Um. Oh my goodness, the guy who played Thor, the Hemsworth. Oh, Liam Hemsworth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. 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 Liam Hemsworth. Yeah. Totally, totally, totally. The accent too, as he whispers <laughs> in my ear. Oh, down. Yeah. I'm there. Yeah. Mm. Now, you, do, you mentioned enjoying girl and girl scenes, and when when asked you know, who would you like to work with, you've had some females mentioned. Was that a thing in your life before getting in the industry? Did you have any experiences with that beforehand, or is that yes. after? Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, definitely. Yeah. My first, um, my first girl and girl experience. I was 15 years old. Oh man. Yeah. Wow, you started out young with all that. So, so pretty much your first girl and girl, you were 15. However, you haven't done actual one now. Now you said you haven't done one for a studio. So, have you done one on your OnlyFans? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. on my OnlyFans and a whole lot in my individual, personal, private life. That's so, so much fun. <laughs> now. Pretty shortly, we're going to probably get ready to wrap this up probably in the next minute or two. Is there anything out there that you want to promote to your fans? You know, any place to find? Is there a, pretty much, yes. have you heard any ramblings yes. of any movies coming up that you're going to be doing? Find me at Twitter, the Sophia West. My only fans is at Sophia West. And my mini vids is at Sophia West as well. So just... Plug me in and come and check me out. <laughs> Plug her in and get yourself unloaded, ladies and gentlemen. Or, well, more so gentlemen, because, you know, women can't really unload. But <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what kind of movies you've watched. I've seen a few. Just wave of release. Definitely. I, I, I think unload still applies to ladies, too. <laughs> And uh, before we go, now we, we talked about the Dutch beer and all that stuff. Is there any, of course, this is the Happy Hour podcast. Is there it's any. Belgian, not Dutch. Belgian. Belgian. Yeah, no, Belgian. I, I've had a couple of drinks myself. I apologize. <laughs> but is I there. You buy me the right kind of beer. That's all. <laughs> now, is there any, besides that, is there any go to brand beer you go to or. What 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 do you do liquor wise? Is there a go to liquor like mine? Jaeger. A lot of people hate Jaeger, but I ice cold Jaeger is the best. Like that's always my go to for shots. Ooh, that's one that I can never do. <laughs> <laughs> um, now my go to drink is vodka because the carbs are not there. Yeah. So yeah, I I will the amount of Grey Goose I have gone through over COVID. <laughs> it, it's it's not happy. I, I took it all to the recycling center. I recycled every bit of it. 
So there you go, Grey Goose, if you're listening, all you have to do is just park your truck outside of her place, and she will probably come out and be like, give me all of the Grey Goose. I want all of it. Bring it all right here. Yes, yes. I've got the olives. I'm good. (laughs) Sophia, it's been great. We really thank you for coming on to the Happy Hour Podcast. We're going to have to hook up again soon, you know, do another interview. Thank you. So once again, thank you. Have a great night, and we will see you again in the future.